Hello, Macha Nehra Rome. I am Melissa Raymond, and today we're going to be making kala. Uh, last year, I was Rose Sarkania, and a few years back, I was a Yoetzet. And um, while I am sad that we are not physically together, I am so grateful to have this opportunity to be part of your team. So let's get started. Um, what I like to do is start first with making the yeast and we have to let that sit for a few minutes. So I have this jar. This is Fleischmann's, okay? But they also sell the packets. One packet is two and a quarter teaspoons. So that's what I do. So that was two teaspoons. Uh, that, actually, that's a half. So I'm gonna do two more of those. And then I do a quarter teaspoon. We like our challah sweet, so I put a half cup of sugar, you know, give or take, into the mixture. Then we put in two cups of warm water. You don't want it to be cold and you don't want it to be too hot because if it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. So I pour in the water and I take Mix it up a little bit, gently. Away. And what you, you stir it up. And what you want to do is let it sit for maybe up to 10 minutes when you start seeing it kind of get a little frothy and bubbly up top. You want to just kind of leave it alone for now. So we're going to put that back to the, off to the side. I put my yeast back in the fridge. I don't want to forget, I want it to stay cold. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Now, while this is getting ready to bubble, this is a good time to prep the rest of your dough. So what I have here is my, you want a big bowl, okay? Um, and you want to, I'm not sure if I have enough flour in this, I may have to pull a little more flour, but the recipe calls for about six to seven cups of flour. And you want to use the um, bread flour, not just all-purpose flour. So you specifically want the bread flour, which um, even though I am gluten-free, <laughs> happens to be extra gluten, and the extra gluten is what really makes it be able to mold and get together. So I do seven cups. Now excuse my measuring cup, the handle broke, but I'm making this with my meat um, dishes because I always serve it with meat. So I do seven cups. So that's two. So I have put in seven cups of flour. Here's my flour. Um, and I kind of sift it around a little bit. This is the bag I use. Um, I just got this from my local kosher, kosher market. As you see, it says high gluten flour. Now I have a little bit of the flour in the bag because we're gonna need that when we start uh, kneading our dough. So we have that. So we're doing our dry ingredients. Now I take another half cup of sugar. So we put one half cup in the yeast mixture and then I take another half or so, depending on how much your family lets you put in. And then um, I also put in two teaspoons of salt. Okay. Kind of stir that around a little bit. Next, we do our wet ingredients. I cheat a little bit because I'm just gonna use my mixing, um, my measuring cup to do this because I just find that easier for me, but you can do it in a separate bowl. You can, you can add it directly in. So at this point, I pour one half cup of oil. Um, I've actually used um, olive oil before too. I use vegetable oil. If you don't have vegetable and you only have olive oil, that's fine. The taste will be a little bit richer in the challah and add, add something to it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it is delicious. Or you can do a mixture. I then add two eggs. Okay, so I've got my one egg, my two eggs. Probably should have had a towel. Bear with me. Um, hands and then I put in a teaspoon we're back to our teaspoon I don't know where I put my teaspoon I think it's here somewhere there it is now I put in a teaspoon of vanilla 
Let me just do a little squirt of honey because all the sugar's not enough, right? So we put a little extra honey in that and um, kind of mix it all together because I could use a fork, which would be useful. And I stir that all together. And since I've been doing all this, look at our yeast. Our yeast has now gotten this lovely little foam on top, which is great because that means it's ready to put into the mixture. I stir it up a little because we want to make sure we get everything mixed together. So I have my flour. I now pour in my egg mixture. And then I pour in the yeast mixture. And I want to make sure that I scrape it all. And by the way, for the yeast mixture, it's best if you use a glass bowl, which is why I use a glass bowl. We'll be seeing this glass bowl again in a little while. So what I do is I start by kind of stirring up together before I get my hands in there. Um, what you could do, if you have a mixer, you can use a mixer, an electric mixer if you want. My mixer happens to be dairy, so I do hollow by hand, and I happen to like it because I like kneading the dough. So sometimes you want to make sure that the, the dough is the right consistency. You sometimes don't even know if you need a little more flour until you start kneading it. So um, I'm going to start doing that with my bare hands. Take a little bit of this flour, okay? And I start working it. And it may seem a little wet at first, which means it may need a little more flour, but sometimes you don't know until you start doing it. You don't want it to be sticky, but you want it to be able to, you know, coat everything and kind of mush it together. So the trick to kneading the dough, the trick to good hollow, sorry, is kneading the dough. A good five to 10 minutes at least of kneading the dough, okay? And I'll, as, once I get this all mixed together, then I'll show you my kneading process. Don't worry, I'm not gonna let you watch me knead dough for 10 minutes. Um, nobody wants to you know, watch that for 10 minutes, but I will get there for you. I just wanna get the dough mixed, and then I'm gonna show you. And you wanna make sure to get all the stuff that's down at the bottom, so if you can see. My grandma shirt is getting covered in flour, but that's okay. So I think I used the right amount of dough um, I'm in the right amount of flour. So you find that if it's a little too wet or if it's a little too sticky, you can just keep adding just little bits, maybe a tablespoon at a time of flour to see if that's all you need. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, so my hands are covered in dough, but that's okay. So I'm gonna move the salt out and move all this stuff out of the way. And I'm gonna pour a little flour on my countertop. Take my dough, as you see, here's my beautiful dough. Let me move that out of the way. Move everything. Oh, my vanilla spilled. Things like that happen. It's a good thing I had the, that's why. See, you should always put the cup in there. Now, I spilled my vanilla. So now I'm gonna knead my dough. By knead, you see what I'm doing here, okay? Just getting in there. Um, Your hands get a little sticky. If you need to, you put more flour in your hands. What you don't want to do is have your hands wet when you start kneading the dough because that won't work well. And you want to work it out so that you don't end up getting any air pockets in it. Okay? So I'm going to cut back when I'm done kneading my dough and show you the next step. So I've kneaded my dough and it's ready for it to set and rise. Okay? So what I do is I take just a drop, just, just a drop of oil. I cleaned out my glass bowl from the, from the yeast. You want to wash that out. And I put some oil on the bottom just so that it doesn't stick and it makes it easier when you're ready. So my dough has been sitting here a little bit, so kind of got a little stuck to my counter. So I put it in here, okay? Kind of mold it in a bowl a little bit. Making it nice and smooth. That will make it nice and smooth is I'll put a tiny little bit 
Now at this point, I put just a drop of oil in my hand and I just coat it on the top as well. It makes it a little bit easier to touch at this point. Just a little bit, just a drop, just enough to you know, make it nice and, and set in here and smooth. You know, the longer you knead it, the smoother it'll be and easier it'll be to work. So you can knead it as long as you want. You can punch it out, you can play with it. Okay, so then it's in the bowl. It's got, a, it's got a little bit of oil. I've already dampened the cloth. I closed this. By the way, I used the time to clean up. I'm one of those cooks who likes to clean as I go so I don't have a massive mess to deal with at the end. I close the cap to the oil. I take my dish towel that's dampened, okay? And I cover it. And we leave it for about two hours. And so it just, you go and do whatever you need to do. Um, if, it need, if it sits a little longer than two hours, that's okay. You don't want it to let it go all day, but two, two hours is about right. And then once this has risen, we will come back and we will braid our challah. Okay, so now it's been a few hours. Um, and actually it was a, more than a couple hours for me because um, I had to take care of some stuff. So I, after a couple hours, I put it in the fridge. Um, so it's a little cold, my hands are a little cold. So I have all this dough. I put some, I took the time to set everything up for this last stage. I have my oven preheated for 350. I put some flour on my counter. Um, I have my egg wash ready. So it's egg wash beaten, my little secret, once again, just a touch of honey. Um, it adds a nice little flavor. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is break my challah into half. Um, actually and then tear off my piece for the blessing for later. Okay, so I take half of it, rough, you know, I'm not, you can weigh it, you can use a scale if you want to, if you happen to have a kitchen scale, that's fine. I just kind of do it by, all right, do they feel about the same? That's just me, that's the way I work. All right, so I'm gonna take half that I'm not gonna make right now, because we're only gonna make one. So I'm gonna put that off to the side, okay. And what I'm gonna do is knead my dough a little bit longer, all right? And I'm gonna do a six braided hala. So what that means is I'm going to, um, so not yet, I'm just still kneading my dough. I'm gonna roll it out. Rolling pin, just the rolling pin. So I'm gonna roll it out. You wanna make sure to get all the air out, okay? Now you should have done most of the kneading of it before taking it out of this, but this will help, especially if you had to put it in the fridge, um, you know, it'll help soften it up. And then I uh, will cut for six pieces, okay? So I'll cut this, you wanna kind of roll it all out, try to make it as even as possible. Again, this is, if you're a perfectionist, then you may want to. I am not quite a perfectionist, not about this at least. I am about certain things. Uh, my family would say so, but. Okay. <coughs> oh, yeah, so my, my helper is behind the camera over there making noises. All right, so I have two pieces here. And so now I wanna make six. So I'm gonna make it a six braid. So I'm cutting so that I have six pieces of dough. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with one, maybe two, and then I'll pop back on when I've had all six rolled out, because it takes some time. And then I'll show you how to do a six uh, braid, a six um, braided hala, six strand braided hala. Um, I was always scared of it, but it's actually quite easy. So you wanna use your hands, roll it out. You can use the roller if you want. Um, I like to use my hands. I have my ways of getting them long, okay? Oh, I forgot to put my chocolate chips in. That's what we were gonna do. That's all right, we'll put the chocolate chips on top. I have the chocolate chips. So I like to make some fun hollas. I like to make chocolate chip holla. You can put sprinkles in, you can make fun fetti. I do a cinnamon sugar holla where I mix a little bit of um, cinnamon and brown sugar and a little olive oil, mix it together, and then I, I put it in the strands, and then layers kind of like a cinnamon hollow. 
I make for um, Rosh Hashanah, I make an apple streusel challah, which is like an apple pie challah. That's pretty insane. That one's really good. So maybe, maybe we'll do another video of that uh, come the fall. So, um, all right, so I made one strand. I'm gonna make another. And we'll pop up. So you just see, you can just keep rolling it. Everybody has a different way of doing it. Um, you know, sometimes people like to go like this. Think, of, think about when you played with Play-Doh. It's kind of like playing with Play-Doh, but more delicious. I mean, I know Play-Doh was edible, but this is a little more delicious. So, okay, so I'm gonna pause and I'll come back to you when I have my six strands. Okay, so we're back. I have my six strings of dough. Um, I actually had done this once where I made a rainbow holla where I used uh, natural food coloring and I did red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And that was really fun um, to do. And you have to just do that ahead of time. Um, you, I, before you let the dough rise, you separate it and then you color it, but you do the same. So what you do is you take your, your strands and kind of just have them touch at the top, okay? So you can have them all stick together. And then here's the way it works with six braiding. It's over two, under one, over two. So over two, under one, over two. And since this is camp, I'm sure most of us or a lot of us have made friendship bracelets. And so it's kind of similar, think about making a friendship bracelet. So then you start at the left again and you go over two, under one, and then you go over these two. And you just keep, keep going, over two, under one, over two. The more if you say to yourself, it'll help you remember over two, under one, over two. You start to run out of dough. Over two, under one, over two. I think I can get one more in. Over two, under one, over two. And just kind of bring it all together, fold it under. The top two, you wanna just kind of fold it under. And um, I have flour still on my counter so let's just kind of get some flour. Okay, so there's my six braided, six strand braided hala, and I put it on my parchment paper. It's better than foil, but if you don't have parchment paper, you can use foil, okay, on my pan. And remember, it's gonna grow and expand. I have my egg wash that has a little bit of honey in it. But before I do that, I forgot because my daughters will be upset with me if I don't take my carved chocolate chips and just kinda, you can put it into the dough um, to make it throughout, you can put it on top. So you can get really creative with this. I've seen all kinds of things. Like I said, I made the rainbow hala, we make cinnamon sugar hala, we make, um, you know, funfetti hala. Depends on whatever you're, you're feeling like. Okay, so just remember it's a sweet holla. So, um, you know, that's how you wanna do that. So I put my chocolate chips. Stir up my egg wash. Very gently paint. I guess you could put the chocolate chips over or under, but I'll just put it under the egg wash. The egg wash is what gives it that nice shine to it. Lost the chip. So just kind of paint it on, you know, just to make sure it's all covered around. And my oven is set to 350, and I pop it in for about 32 to 35 minutes. Now, what I like to do is I bake this earlier in the day, but right before we do Shabbat, right before Shabbat, I stick it back in the oven to heat it up for a few minutes, just so it gets nice and warm and crispy in my. Family loves it and, and it's delicious. So here we go. And when this is done baking, I will show you the final product if we have time before it is devoured by my family. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I forgot to mention what we do with the other half. So you can either braid both halas at the same time and you can have two halas, depends on how many people you're serving if you want two halas. You can do a lot with this extra set. You can make smaller ones and you can make like um, little bread rolls, or you can 
make another hala, um, or you can freeze it like I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna freeze my second roll, my second batch of dough. Um, I wrap it in some uh, freezer wrap and I put it in a bag and I put it in my freezer and then next week I take it out, I thaw it out for a little bit and then I can make fresh challah again with this second thing of dough. So the other half of the dough. So I just wanted to mention that and we will see you back with our baked challah. So here is the final product, our yummy, delicious chocolate chip six braid challah. Cannot wait to dive into it. I know my family can't either. So we will see you soon for chocolate babka making. We want to wish you from our family to yours to be healthy and safe and have a great and relaxing and restful summer. All right, take care. Bye.